The basic technique of the ESP block is well described in many publications and online sources. In this short presentation, I'm going to highlight a few points that I think are particularly important. The first thing to say is that although the original description of the ESP block emphasized the tip of the transverse process as the target, this may not be the optimal place for the needle tip. The reason is that the fascicles of longissimus thoracis muscle, part of the erector spinae, insert via tendons onto the tips of the transverse processes, and these strong attachments are not easy to separate. This may account for the difficulty in getting a good separation and lifting of erector spinae off of the transverse process. As our aim is to get under the investing fascia of the muscle, it may be better to aim for the costal transverse junction, just lateral to the tip and onto the tubercle of the rib, thus avoiding these tenderness attachments. Avoid, however, being too lateral out along the rib, as the shortest and least obstructed path into the paravertebral and intercostal space is still through the intertransverse gap. Further out, the intercostal muscles form an additional barrier to spread and diffusion. The insertions of the second layer of longissimus fascicles onto the ribs may also hamper hydrodissection at this location. Another alternative is to aim to place the needle tip into the intertransverse gap and avoid contacting the transverse processes altogether. To this end, it is helpful to do a pre-procedural scalp scan with the probe in a transverse orientation to identify the location of the spinous and transverse processes and to mark them on the skin. These markings will guide subsequent parasagittal scanning with the probe in the longitudinal orientation. This is an example of an initial intramuscular injection. Note that the step-like articulation between transverse process and the tubercle of the rib is visible, signifying that we are over the costal transverse junction. However, the needle tip has not been advanced deep enough yet. In the second video, the needle tip is now deep to the investing thoracolumbar fascia of longissimus, and the muscle is lifting off the bone. The fascia is clearly visible, superficial to the fluid. If necessary, the needle can also be advanced deeper into this space. A transverse in-plane approach is also an alternative way to perform a single-shot ESP block, the advantage being that it is easier to see the costal transverse junction and to appreciate the muscle layers and fascia. You can see a good separation and lifting of the erector spinae muscle off the tubercle of the rib as well as off the intercostal muscles and superior costal transverse ligament. As an aside, some of you will note that the lateral paravertebral space is also clearly visible here. If this is the case and you are confident of tracking the needle tip accurately, there is nothing to stop you changing the plan and performing a transverse in-plane paravertebral block instead. Another point to remember is that the morphology of the transverse processes are different at different levels. They get progressively shorter towards the lower thoracic vertebra and are almost absent at T12. Changes in the overlying muscle layers also means that they are deeper at levels above T4 to T5 due to the trapezius muscle and also at the lower levels due to the increased thickness of the erector spinae muscle. A curved transducer can sometimes be helpful if depths are greater than 5 centimeters. A word on needle trajectory. It is recommended that the needle be introduced at a shallow angle, particularly if intending to thread a catheter. The angle should be less than 45 degrees, with 30 degrees or less working well most of the time. What this also means is that we should plan the skin insertion site to be an appropriate distance away from the probe to allow us to reach the targeted transverse process. This video illustrates this using a Tohi catheter through needle set. Note how in thin patients, the muscle can be significantly compressed by probe pressure. As always, use hydrolocation and watch for intramuscular injection. If this occurs, insert deeper to get under the investing fascia and to obtain the desired linear spread that occurs in both a cranial and cordate direction and lifts the muscle off of the bony shadow. Once the space has been open and the needle tip is within it, a catheter can be easily threaded in.
If using a catheter over needle set, it is ideal to take advantage of the hydrodissection to drive the needle catheter assembly all the way towards the next transverse process, thus ensuring an adequate length of catheter in the fascial plane to prevent dislodgement. The shallow trajectory also minimizes the risk of catheter kinking from muscle contractions and movement that will otherwise result in occlusion and high pressure alarms with infusions. A final recap of the main points. Always begin with saline or dextrose as the injectate to confirm entry into the correct plane. The muscle should lift but not expand. But at the same time as illustrated here, it is still possible to be on the wrong side of the thoracolumbar fascia. While injecting, therefore, it is advisable to scan dynamically and observe carefully to ensure that fluid is spreading under the hyperechoic fascial envelope of the muscle and not above and within it, as in this case. Fortunately, this is recognized here, and the needle can then be advanced deeper into the correct plane between the hyperechoic fascia and its bony surface. If there is any difficulty in getting linear spread that lifts the fascia off the bone, consider that the needle tip may be within tenderness attachment to the tip of the transverse process. Going slightly more lateral onto the tubercle of the rib may solve this problem. Finally, if there is any doubt, it is always better to advance the needle deeper, injecting into the intertransverse connective tissues and performing a midpoint transverse process to pleura block. This has the best chance of achieving successful blockade of ventral rami.